Welcome back guys. I hope you're all having a great day and today we will be talking about the Who Needs 10 Lines Anyways goodie box. And this is not a normal goodie box, this is a part of the Crush goodie boxes, which is like a quarterly box you get every season I think it is. Uh, and it costs for me uh, 99 in Danish, 13.5 uh, in euros and 15.5 in US dollars. The box comes in this fine little box where the others are much bigger usually. Uh, but this one is really really cute actually. I really like the small uh, design. And the box itself uh, they made, I told you it was named Who Needs 10 Lines Anyways and it's like uh, the autumn box. So it's made to kind of remember the summer but ease into the autumn too. So we are talking uh, warm drinks like hot cocoa, hygge, uh, sweaters and all just nice cold weather I guess. And overall I guess it's just autumn with a little bit of a twist of summer. And they say it should be a natural look, again, with a hint of a bit of sunshine and you guys can judge that because I have the makeup on my face right now. So we get everything that we need to make a new makeup look in this box and that's what I'm wearing. Uh, the only difference is I am wearing mascara because there was no mascara in this, but otherwise everything is on my face right now, with no exception. So, I think we should get into the first product, um, because I've been looking very much forward to it. This is my first crush box, uh, and I only noticed that I could get it for cheap, or cheaper, because I have the goodie box, um, like a subscription. Um, yeah, so I thought I might as well try this one out, because I like makeup as well as I like normal skincare, and 99 uh, Danish Kuma is not that much every third uh, month, so it's not really a problem for me and I was excited to see what type of stuff there's in there. So it's not for me rambling, let's just get into the first item. The first product we're talking about is this foundation sponge and it is from Nairi. And I have tried lots of their other stuff before because we've gotten them in, in earlier boxes. And we have gotten brushes and a face cleaner also earlier. So I was like, I would be surprised if this was really bad. Um, because everything else we got was so good. And I must say I do love this sponge too. Um, I guess it just it just makes sense for me since everything, every other thing I got from them was so good. But overall they say like this is supposed to help you reach all the hard to reach places. It can be used on pretty much anything you can use it with. Uh, foundation, liquids, creams, blush, all types of powders, um, contour or highlight, pretty much everything. Um, so first up that's like some pretty good claims. If you can just like use this blending sponge for everything. But I started using it and I actually have been using it ever since. Like this is my go-to sponge right now. The sponge is super easy to use. It's very soft, it gets huge, but contains like the softness when you uh, when you wet it. And it does reach pretty much everywhere because of this tip. So it's easy to get it under your eyes, really pat it in there. It is super easy again and it just blends effortlessly. I feel like it's it gives me a very beautiful and natural look and it helps with uh, both. I tried it both on a foundation, a moisturizer, moisturizer sorry, and a powder. And I feel like it worked pretty well with all of them. But at first when I used it after using the liquids, I felt like it didn't really like work as well with the powders so it was easier to just go directly into a powder instead of using foundation and then powder with this so if i use it like um twice or if i 
started with foundation and then waited a bit with the powder. I feel like it worked much better, it patted on more more even. Um, but I really, really felt like it, it did what it was supposed to do. It blended everything, patted everything uh, in, and I just overall, I really like it. So it was really soft, I didn't have to tuck or dab really hard on my face, so nothing hurt. It was just effortlessly and super easy, and I really like that. The packaging it came in, it came in like a very small plastic bag that I actually think might not be plastic because that's usually what they do. Normally they have like a little tag on it that says I'm not a plastic bag. They didn't this time but they did have the, the normal tag, the here's what you should know tag. So like a little book where it says it's that it's like vegan, it's paraben free. This was also latex free and not tested on animals so it's animal friendly and vegan then it's hypoallergenic and also recyclable. And I think that's because it is a silicon foam. So I guess that's recyclable. At least that's what I think. Um, I don't think the packaging is as well. Maybe it is. I don't know what the plastic stuff was made from, but this one is supposed to be uh, recyclable. The actual look of it, is so standard. This is a blending sponge, so of course it looks kind of like this, or very similar is at least the feel that these blending sponges go for. Uh, it's orange, that's it. So I got no special feelings about that, but I guess it's fine. Uh, I don't really care that much about how it looks, as long as it works, since nobody's supposed to, to really see me. Um, and it's not like I'm wearing this. So it doesn't really matter if it's orange or red or green or whatever it is. So the claims I agree on. It can be used for so many things. Uh, both foundations, liquids, uh, sorry, highlighter I've used for. Uh, blush I haven't and not contour either, but I can definitely imagine it, it worthy, working. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine it working if uh, it worked on my powders and my blush. Not my blush. Am I a fool? When it works on my powder and my liquids, is what I wanted to say. The cost is 99 in Danish, 13.5 and 15.5. So the same as the box actually. So I could have gone out and just bought this. Well, I couldn't because this is actually a limited edition, which is a bit sad. I wish I could get a new one. Um, yeah, but it's the same price as the box. So already there, like it has earned earned is right I think uh, and I will definitely use it again because I already have that's why it looks used I use it every time I do my makeup actually so a uh, new favorite sponge I really hope they start really making this instead of just doing a limited edition but we'll see fingers crossed on to the next thing Is this Origins Ginseng SPF 40. It is a energy boosting and tinted moisturizer and I was really not skeptical but I was a bit worried about how this would work because normally tinted stuff is just either too tinted for me or not tinted at all. So I was a bit um, worried about how they did this but they say it's a magical product. It's supposed to boot, boot. I don't think that. It's supposed to boost your face, like the energy, give new energy to your skin, so you look fresher. You get an uh, a hydrated face and an even finish, uh, sim simply because the minerals in this blends into the skin. And I think this is so funny, because again, I said with the tint, it is either way too tinted or not tinted at all. And this one, instead of calling it um, a sheer tint, I think they should call it transparent because I don't really see it. I feel like uh, the first time I applied it, I used it with the sponge and that was nothing. Like, I saw nothing. I just felt like a bit more energized. Uh, and next time I tried with my fingers, it works so much better with the fingers in the applying technique. They actually say you should apply it with your fingers, but simply because the sponge was 
supposed to be able to to be used on anything I thought that might like work but I guess not so use your fingers with this it works much better even though the sheer um, tint should be transparent again I still don't really see any coloring I do see a like smoother skin tone or something, but I don't really see any tinting at all. Um, but it is a nice, a very nice, both hydrating and, um, well, great moisturizer in itself. It does have SPF 40, so I guess that's pretty good. But I was kind of sold on the tint part, and it just didn't come in for me. I just didn't feel it at all, um, which I think is pretty sad. And, uh, Disappointing, very disappointing. But nonetheless, it felt nice, uh, it felt hydrating, it was very moisturizing, and it did make my skin look brighter. Again, no tint, but I did feel like my face was getting a bit smoother. The packaging on this is very cute and very simple. Uh, it's always informative. I feel like with Origins, they always have like a very simple little logo and then something about the actual um, product which I think is pretty cool. There's no labels inside, I can't find any, I'm so sorry. That's just how it is. And the scent is very citrusy. It is like somewhere between an orange and a lemon. And at first I was really wondering why or how. But after reading the ingredient list, I understood. And we will come to the ingredient list in a second. I have it all written down and I will tell you there's five sides. That's not the real world word in English. That's five pages. I got five pages written down with good and bad um, ingredients in this. And usually what I do is I name only the good and only the bad ingredients. I don't take the average, the okay, the ne, the in between stuff, only the good and the bad. Five pages, guys. So I guess I'll just I I just have to read it for you. And if you're not interested, you can just like go on and then watch the um, what do you call like the arc. I don't even know what in the world is it called. Um, the stuff, the stuff I put behind. You know, I always show you what the ingredients are. If you don't want to listen to me, just just go to there. It will be somewhere in 100 years when I'm done reading this for you because there's a lot on this. But the first we got, we take the good first, and then I will ramble on about the bad afterwards. And the question I was asking was. Why does this smell somewhere between a lemon and an orange? And we will get to it in the bad part, just remember that. But the first one is sodium hyaluronate. Uh, this one replenishes, it is a salt form of the hyaluronic acid. Then we got tocopherol acetate, this is a vitamin E and an antioxidant. We got titanium dioxide, which is a thickening, widening, lubricating, uh, and sunscreen ingredients, so it protects against UVA and UVB. Then we got panthothenic acid, acid sorry, which is also called panthothene. It is vitamin B5 and effective for hydration. We got creatine, which is an amino acid that is skin restoring. Then we got Panax, Panax ginseng root extract, which is a great antioxidant. Uh, it hydrates and helps against uneven skin tones, it helps against rough texture and wrinkles. So kind of a miracle product, ingredient, not product. Then we got Psidium Guava Fruit Extract, with, which is guava, and is a rich source of antioxidants as long as it is in a, uh, like a airtight container where light cannot get in, which I guess this is, it's not transparent or anything, uh, except of course the color, haha, <laughs> haha, but light shouldn't be able to get in it. Then it has hydrogenated lecithin, which is an emollient and water binding uh, properties, and it is skin restoring. 
We got magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which is a vitamin C. It is a effective antioxidant. It increases hydration and is calming. Uh, when it is used in amounts of 5% or more, it is shown to improve the look of uneven skin tone. And we got adenosine phosphate, which is skin soothing, restoring and revitalizing. Yes, that's a lot more. Number three out of five, guys. Then we got... Wow, sorry. Then we got acetyl can uh, carnitine. Then we got acetyl carnitine HCl, which is a great antioxidant. We got squalene. Squalene. I never remember how to say that right, so I'm sorry about that. But this is hydrating. It is a emollient and has great antioxidant uh, properties and is a sort of replenishing fatty acids. And the last good one we got is Gasnia Mangostana Peel Extract, which is a great antioxidant. It is repairing and it is calming. And that's actually only the good ingredients in here. So I think we should just get right into the bed because that's also quite some. Um, and again, this is why it smells weird, not weird. This is why I feel like it smells like a mix of orange and lemon. It's because of the bad stuff, it's because there's a lot of fragrance in here. And the first one we got is limonene, which is the fragrance form uh, from sorry, citrus oil oils. It's from pine trees, it's from mint species. It can be sensitizing when it's exposed to air, uh, but otherwise it's a strong antioxidant and it can calm skin. But the sensitizing effect is the reason I'm putting it in the best spot. We got linalool which is a fragrant from lavender and coriander and it's again sensitizing. Then we got lemon oil, which contains many fragrances. Uh, it is like a chemical, um, well it's not a chemical, but it's made up of other chemicals that are fragrant and can therefore also be sensitizing, uh, especially when exposed to light. Then we got grapefruit, grapefruit. That would be a great, uh, great thing. A grapefruit peel extract, which is the peel from grapefruit, gra grapefruit. Round of applause. I said it right. And uh, this peel actually contains ingredients known to give like a rash or sunburn-like uh, condition uh, or reaction. Yeah, when exposed, like when exposed to sun. So. That's actually pretty bad, I'm just saying. Um, but like low amounts shouldn't give problems, higher amounts can. Um, and I don't really know like if this one does, because if it's high on the ingredient list, there's a bigger chance that it might be sensitizing, that it might give this irritation and sunburn like rash like conditions. But it has to be like at the top of the list. Also, if it smells a lot, lot like grapefruit, that can give be a giveaway of how high on the list it is. Um, but in this one, it's like ingredient number 12 out of 61. And I would say ingredient number 12 isn't so bad because it's not like there's not a lot in it. But out of 61 ingredients, I don't really know. What to think about that? Just 60, 61 ingredients overall just seems excessive to me. Then we got menthol viridis, sorry, it is spearmint and it is also a fragrance, so it can be sensitizing. We got citrus orantium dulcis peel oil, which is orange peel oil. It is also a fragrant, so can be sensitizing. The main component actually in citrus orantium dulcis peel oil, the orange peel oil, is limonene that we had earlier, so that's limonene, and then there's another form of fragrance that also has limonene in it. Then we got citrus orantium, uh, amara flower water, and this is bitter orange flower water. Another fragrance, can be sensitizing. And we got citrus orantium amara flower wax, and this is the bitter orange flower wax. It's another fragrance that can be sensitizing, and I know. Sorry guys, apparently my camera stopped, so I'll just take the last two ingredients now. It is citral, which is a um, sensitizing fragrance again. And then the last one is essential oils. And essential oils are usually made up 
by a lot of natural components. Uh, it could be 60, it could be 100, we don't really know. Uh, originally it was used as aromatherapy, which is pretty cool, which I find okay. Because you're only smelling it, you're not putting it on your skin or eating it or anything else like that. But it was good as aromatherapy, then we started putting it on our skin. And I don't really enjoy that idea, because it is built up of so many different components. Some of these can be good, but I love that a lot of them are also very bad. Uh, a lot of these components are actually fragrance already, and as you know, fragrance can be sensitizing. So I don't really think the good outweighs the bad. Well, I just think it's it's better to not not use it, simply because there's so many bad stuff there. And the uh, claims, it is definitely hydra hydrating, moisturizing. It's smooth out my skin without giving any tint. It didn't give the like even finish. I think if there really was a tint in it, it would give it more even finish. But I also get why they wouldn't just put a really tinted thing in here. Because if you have darker skin, you can't really enjoy it, you can't really use it. So it kind of has to be a bit sheer for everyone to be able to use it. The cost of it, not, not this small tube, but a normal size one, would be 250 in Danish, uh, 34.5 in euros and then 39 in US dollars. And to be honest, if I will use it, I really don't know. I have used it a few times because I wanted to try it out for you guys. But I just feel like the ingredients really scare me in this one. And I'm afraid that if I keep on using it, I might really damage my skin or I might really get it too sensitized. Especially because my skin is kind of weird already. I wouldn't really call it sensitive, but kind of. It just breaks out at the weird weirdest things. So I don't really think I will... Uh, Keep on using it. Nope. So let's go on to the next thing. Okay. Product on our list is this Emite Makeup Pure Lip Liner. And as the name suggests, it's a lip liner. They say it should give fuller lips. It should be moisturizing and long lasting and then it can be used with like uh, other lipsticks. It can be used with a gloss and it can also be used just as it is. Um, and honestly, I know this is very embarrassing so please, 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 please don't hate me. But this is my first lip liner ever because I'm pretty cheap. And do I really want to use a lot of money on a lip liner that has the same cover as my lipstick when I could just use the lipstick all over. That's kind of how I feel. So this is my first lip lipstick, lip liner. This is my first lip liner, not lipstick, I got lots of lipsticks. But that's simply why I haven't bought any yet. I'm still happy to get this because I like the color. You can see it on me here. It's pretty pigmented, it's pretty out there, but I feel like it's very nice. It's a pretty color. It was super easy to apply, usually with these types of liners I feel like it's easy to draw outside the lines. Like it's so precise that it looks wonky when you're done with it. But I didn't feel that with this at all, it was just soft and easy. And I'm pretty impressed that I didn't draw all over my face actually. It was not drying and fil filled and filled Stop it. and felt very comfortable. Um, and very weightless actually. I don't really feel like I have it on that much. Um, it only goes like when I had it on for a while, I could feel it because it gets a bit um, drier after some time. But the first couple hours, I don't feel anything. The scent, I don't really think there's none. I mean, it smells like tree, which kind of makes sense because it is 100% plant based. The funny thing with them saying it's 100% plant-based is that I can't find the ingredient list anywhere. I can't find it anywhere. I was looking and looking and looking and I finally find, found like something, but it wasn't really anything. Like it was, they started a sentence and then they just stopped it or something, so I don't even, I can't find anything at all. 
Uh, so ingredients I can't tell you about. I only know it's 100% plant-based, at least that's what I'm told, so I kind of have to fake that. The claims, I will say my lips did look a bit fuller, but I feel like mostly that's because you draw a bit outside your actual lips, so they do seem bigger. It uh, really depends on how you draw. It looked defined, it looked beautiful, my lips. I really like how they look right now, uh, overall. And to be honest, the long-lasting effect, I'm a bit unsure. Um, because I think it lasted about six hours, like the first times I used it, it was about six hours. But that's pretty good, I feel like, because I had been eating and drinking and doing all sorts of stuff. Um, so kind of long-lasting, kind of not, but it's pretty okay. The price is 164 in Danish, 22 in euros and 25.5 in US dollars, which is, I feel like it's expensive, I don't really know because I don't buy these types of things. But it's not so expensive that I would think, oh no, I would never buy it again. The only thing is, of course, I don't know the ingredients, so it's pretty hard to tell if I really like it. Like, if there's something in here that I should be aware of, I don't know. So, yeah, I, don't, I really don't know. Um, I will use it. I'll definitely use it up because I like the color. I think I will use it with the gloss too. I think that might be pretty. Um, and I might even buy a new one if I find out what the ingredients are. And they're not too bad. I think I might want to buy a new one in a color that I, I think I'll use more. Um, but nonetheless, I will use this, this one. With the makeup. And we go to the Isadora Twist Up Eyeglass. And I was just about to say I'm wearing this, but I already told you I'm wearing everything in this box. And they say this is a fast and easy way to do an eye look. And it can be built up. That's all. That's all it says. And I think this is kind of interesting. I don't think I've had I've had like um eye shadows that you have to put on like this just directly onto your eyelid but I've never had an eye glass so I really thought that it might only be like glossy highlighting or something like that um, I was also a bit afraid that this color would be very ugly because it seems a bit purpley but nonetheless I didn't have to worry because when I put it on you mostly just see the shimmer effect um, if I build it up, I see a lot of shimmer. It looks pretty party-like. I'm, I'm ready to party when I use it that much. But the color doesn't really show that much. I see that there is some purplish tones. But it's not really so that I think, oh god, I'm wearing purple eyeshadow. It's more like, oh god, there's a party happening on my eyelids. Which I'm not that mad about. It was super easy to apply, as to say super fast, super easy, you swipe it on, this took like 20 seconds. You can choose to pat it out, then it goes a bit away, but today I just chose to put it on to see how much pigment or how much I could get out of it. And the feeling of it, it it's very creamy. It's very, very creamy and very soft. I don't feel I have it on at all right now. The only thing is with the glitter and this, it might go a bit here and a bit there. So you might get glitter on your face. If you use it to dab it out, you will get glitter on your fingers. That's how it is. But um, for me, that doesn't matter that much. I mean, if I use this alone, it should be for a more natural look anyways. And a bit of sparkle doesn't matter so much. Like, it's not unnatural. Uh, the build up again. Color does not build up. Shimmer does definitely build up. The scent, it smells like Play-Doh. And I don't know why. But it does smell like Play-Doh. And the packaging, the packaging is really smart. I mean, like, I don't find it beautiful. Or I don't find it pretty at all. I think it's pretty chunky, if that makes sense. But I like that it's a twist up, so you don't have to sharpen anything. Uh, you simply just twist and use it. So it's very, very convenient. The ingredients in this, I have a few. I think I have four. I'll just read them to you. We got lecithin. This is found in egg yolks and in plants. It's an emollient and water binding property. 
and it has skin restoring abilities. Then we got tocopherol, which is a vitamin C and an antioxidant. We got ascorbyl palmitate, which is vitamin C. It is an effective antioxidant. It is effective at reducing environmental damage. And the last one is titanium dioxide, which is a thickening, whitening, lubricating, and sunscreen in sunscreen sunscreen ingredient. It protects against UVA and UVB radiation. That's it. So that's like four good ingredients in this. And I feel like that's fine. It's good that it has like some soothing abilities since it is used on the list, so there shouldn't really be any bad ingredients in, uh, ingredients in it. Since I feel like if you use fragrance, if you use these bad ingredients on your eyelids and can, and can be extra sensitizing because your skin is very sensitive already on your eyelids. Did that make sense? I felt like that was just a stumble of words. Uh, this is clinically tested. That's the only label I could find. I couldn't find anything else. Um, so I'm sorry about that. The cost is M A M D. We're making up new words today, guys. It is 85 Danish, 11 and a half uh, euro, and 13 and a half US dollars. Concerning the claims, it is definitely super fast, super easy to use. There's no problem. It can definitely build up. Um, not as much color-wise, it does build up a bit of color, but not super pigmented. But the shimmer definitely um, builds up. And I will use it again. Uh, mostly it's a highlight, I think. It, it does give me highlighting vibes more than it gives me eye vibes. So I think that's how I will use it. Or maybe as some extra shimmer if I need a bit. But overall, I don't think I will use it alone, just as a eyeshadow eye gloss. I think it, it serves more of a supporting purpose in life. First product we got this May Translucent Setting Powder. It is with added hyaluronic acid. Which I think is exciting because hyaluronic acid has been praised to the skies. I don't know how much is, it really helps the skin when it's only in a setting powder, but we'll see. Um, they usually say they usually say their words are it gives a perfect finish. It is mattifying and stays on all day, from morning to evening. It prevents your skin from being shiny, which makes sense if it's mattifying. And when I read the the words they say, like the stuff they say about this, they really had emphasis on long lasting, both from morning to night. Long lasting, it's lasting long, you will have it on all day. They kept on talking about how long lasting it was, and so I was really looking into that part of this actually. And when I got this, it was just in time because I have been looking for a new, uh, like translucent, or not necessarily translucent, but a new setting powder. And it came just in time. It was just perfect timing. And it is very easy to use. I use it with the sponge we got. That I don't know where it is. I got the sponge. I think it disappeared. But I used it with the sponge and it really helps like um, pat everything in place. It gives a great um, finish. If I use it like with a brush it does give me a more natural finish. But if I use it with the the um, what is it called the sponge, if I use it with the sponge, it's like it's mattifying more. It it goes better on, and that's just how it is. I think that's the same for most powders. It happened again, guys. I don't know what is wrong with my camera right now. But it apparently doesn't want to film. So, that's cool. Uh, nonetheless, I think I was talking about the applying, like, you get a better, more even, more powdery finish with the sponge and a more natural look with the brush. Uh, the feeling of the, the powder is very light. It's very light. Uh, it looks very natural, very pretty, beautifies and gives me smoother skin. 
not like 100% smooth, but it definitely helps. It looked mattifying, but it only stayed on for about 6 hours. Yeah. And I mean like after 3 or 4 hours, I started getting like oily patches in the in the forehead and the and the chi chin, which I think is very sad compared to the fact they say it should be able to last from morning to night. If they say that, I will think that it should lasting from last from morning to night without having to touch it up, uh, which it didn't. So I'm very disappointed in that. The packaging is very simple, very not interesting. It's just pure plastic, uh, so nothing incredible there. The scent reminds me of when I was a kid, and not in a good way. I know we had a product before that smelled like bubblegum. This one smells like old powdery makeup. Like, have you ever had those kits when you were younger where you just got a lot of powder makeup or eyeshadow and it just smelled like old powder? That's how this one smells. Very nice. The labels on this, it is mineral based, paraben free, it is animal cruelty free and vegan. And um, that's pretty good. I think it's nice. There's two ingredients in this and of course one of them is hyaluronic acid. The other one I will tell you about right now. I will actually tell you about both but we'll start with one. I don't think you can hear both at the same time. We got tocopherol acetate which is a vitamin E and an antioxidant and then we got this hyaluronic acid which is incredible because it is actually found like the, the component in, in this, or oh, it. Then we got hyaluronic acid, which is this miracle component, miracle ingredient, because it is a component actually found in skin tissue. So that's why it has these great restoring, uh, replenishing abilities, simply because it already knows how to imitate how the skin works and how the skin functions. It is actually one of the superior ingredients, like in restoring and replenishing the skin, again, because it acts as skin tissue or is found in skin tissue. Uh, it's very respirative and can boost the skin's moisture content. And it actually both soothes, hydrates and defends against moisture loss, and it's also an antioxidant. And especially great against environmental assault, which could mean like sun damage or anything like that actually. The claims, we've come to the claims finally. Um, it mattified greatly, it looked good when I put it on. The long wearing I just can't agree with. Again I got oil on my forehead and my chin after 3 or 4 hours which I'm not really that happy about since they said it should be long lasting so I will want something more than just six hours. I would say it's like semi long wear and if you just wanted to touch it up you can do it but that's not really what I want to if they tell me it's long lasting so I didn't really have any other troubles with it but I just didn't feel like it did as much as it should um, which is kind of sad which is also why I will use it up but I won't buy a new one because I just think it doesn't do enough the price is 164 for it, uh, 22 euros, 164 is of course Danish, 22 euros and 6, 62, well that would be super expensive, 26 US dollars and I just think for those money it's not really, it's not really worth it for me, um, even though I was looking for a new setting powder I guess it's not worth the money if the long-lasting effect actually isn't long-lasting. And um, it's just, I'm just a bit, I'm just a bit disappointed. Can you feel it, guys? So that's actually all for this uh, cute crush box that I got. And again, it was super, super cheap. It is my first box and I get it every third month. Uh, so I can really, um, it can really pay off, especially if I get just, you can see like the sponge I loved and that's, the value of the entire box, so that's pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy, happy about it. So have any of you guys tried either the box or any of the products before? I would be very curious to know. You can tell me in the comments below if you have. 
You can also like if you like this video, subscribe if you want to stay for more content, and just do whatever you like. It's a free world, I guess. <laughs> so do what you enjoy. And uh, I think that's all for, for this time, for this review, for this day. I hope you will have a good evening, night, day, midday, wherever you are in your life. And I just hope you all have a happy life, one day at a time. <laughs>